In this video, I'm going to talk uh, on the concept of genome-wide association studies, GWAS, and also show you how to do GWAS analysis and R using GAPIT's package of R. The goal of GWAS is to associate phenotypic variation with the variation in the genome. And this association helps us separate useful variation in the genome from those variation that are not useful to us depending on the trait of interest. Separating the use of variation from others in the genome is called allele mining. For you to carry out GEOs, you need to set up a population from which you are going to phenotype and also genotype to get phenotypic data and marker data or genotypic data. Quality control is done on this data to remove individuals and markers with high error rates. And this can be done by removing individuals that does not achieve the thres thres threshold of heterozygosity. This depends on the population if this cross-pollinated or open-pollinated. It's also done by removing markers with high missing data. Also removing individuals with high missing markers. And also it's done by ensuring that your phenotypic data follows a normal distribution. In GWAS analysis, what typically happens is just regression analysis. With a, a data that's continuous, a, a linear regression is done at each locus. For instance, in a particular locus, we may be having two allele A and T. That means at that the possible genotype at that locus is AA, as you see here, AT and TT, assuming that T is a minor allele. So therefore, the frequency of a minor allele increases along the x-axis. AA is coded as 0, AT1, and TT2. Individuals at the low side with AA, their phenotypic score is plotted here. Individuals with AT, at this loci, at this locus, uh, their scores are plotted here, and those with TT here, and a best fit line is uh, is uh, drawn uh, according to the regression analysis, and the effective size of this minor allele is computed together with the probability of this analysis. In GWAS, we have an issue with the p-value and a multiple testing problem. Multiple testing problems comes when we are doing pairwise comparison during the post hoc comparisons. A peak value of 0 0.05 means that there's a likelihood of 5% that the outcome is spurious association. 5% is one out of 20. This means that if you do 20 uh, regression analysis, one out of those 20 has a false positive. And this false positive brings about a spurious, a spurious association, which cannot be relied on. And in GWAS, we do millions of uh, uh, this kind of analysis because we have a lot of synapses hundreds of thousands to millions. A P of 0 0.05 could mean that we are having more than 200,000 false positives. This is due to family-wise error rate. And family-wise error rate is just a type 1 error where you reject the null hypothesis, hypothesis while it is true. Bonferroni correction is applied to control uh, uh, to control the family-wise error rate. A uh, family-wise error rate is computing use, computed using this formula here. I want to note that 0 0.05 is the p-value that is traditionally accepted. And this, this here 
is raised by the number of tests that are carried the number of pairwise tests a ponferroni correction is done to correct this uh, family wise error rate where this 0 0.05 is the uh, p value that's traditionally accepted divided by the number of pairwise tests To understand this, consider comparing five SNPs, A, P, C, D, and E. If you carry out analysis or ANOVA, at the p-file of 0 0.05, you find that all these five SNPs are significantly different. But in case you want to find which is A different from P, is A different from C, you do a pairwise uh, comparison. You see, this is called post hoc test. You may have, if you have five SNPs here, you may have all these 10 pairwise comparisons. With 10 pairwise comparisons, compute the family wise error rate. It will be, it will be 0 0.4, which is 40% chance of getting a spurious association. That means out if you do 100 associations, 40 are post false positives. So upon foreign correction corrects this by dividing this p value by the number of pairwise comparison and it gives 0 0.005. That means out of 100%, 0 0.5 is a spurious association. This one reliably correct this uh, multiple testing problem. GWAS takes account to population structure because population structure affects the reliability of the association. In your population, you could have subpopulations and this subpopulation due to maybe different, they come from different regions and all those genetics they have different trait distribution. Maybe two population, population A and P. A shows less amount of third trait than P. And also the marker genotype frequency differ among these subpopulations. This kind of structure brings confounding effects that leads to spurious uh, association. Therefore, during GOS analysis, population structure is taken care of by using principal component analysis. You take the principal components and use them as covariate in your model. And this kind of model where you take a marker effect and the principal component as a covariate, these are general, generalized linear model. Or you can use the mixed linear model where you use a kinship or a relationship matrix as uh, a random factor and a SNP effect of markers together with the PCA as a fixed uh, effect. So this can be summarized here in this figure here where this is a, a phenotype, this is a SNP effect and these are the PCs, this is a Q matrix principal components, though all these two are fixed effects. If you use all of this, you get a, this a, chin, a general linear model. If you add kinship as a random factor, it's a mixed, mix, a mixed linear model, which has random and fixed effects. And this kinship corrects false positives due to uh, uh, an equal relatedness and this PCC, this Q matrix, which is principal component co uh, 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 controls what we call the population structure. The result from GWAS is summarized using QQ plots and the Manhattan plots. QQ plots is a quantile quantile plot and they visualize the overall, overall distribution of the p values. As we said, 
when those regression analysis are being carried at each loci, their p values are also computed. So down here at the x axis, we have expected p value, and y axis, we have observed uh, p value. The expected p value are uh, multiplied by negative log 10, also negative log 10 here. And under another hypothesis, the p values, this figure should fall this straight line here uniformly. But if it deviates like this here, it means there is uh, this an association. Another thing which I want to notice is that if you find your QQ plots deviating from here, nearly everything, that means you have false positives, which you need, can, we need to be corrected using kinship and also using uh, principal components. And also I think your design of experiment done in a correct way. Uh, also, your GWAS result can be uh, 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 summarized using this Manhattan plots. This Manhattan plots uh, here are the number of chromosomes. These are chromosomes. We have 10 chromosomes. And here, these are heats. And this is a threshold. This line is the threshold. And whatever is above threshold, a threshold is a significant SNP, which has association. Now, I want to show you how to do your GWAS analysis using R. We are going to use a package called GAPIT. GAPIT stands for Genomic Association and Prediction Integrated Tool. So we can install this GAPIT a package from GitHub using this command, install those packages. First you install DevTools, then install this using this code here. I have done that. The next thing to do is to load this GAPIT3 into our library and then import our phenotypic data, genotypic data, and the population structure data, which I'm going to import. I've done so. They're here in the environment, genotypic data, phenotypic and the population structure. So we have, as I said, we're going to run three models here. General linear model, uh, me, this is a mixed linear model, and from CPU. From CPU stand for fixed and random model circulating probability unification. So uh, running a general linear model, this is, means that we're going to have marker effects as a fixed and also population structure uh, or the PCA as a fixed effect. This Y is the phenotypic data. We have selected the first and the third column because the first in this phenotypic data has four columns. The first column is the, the names of the individuals, population individuals, and three is the uh, the traits that are uh, of our interest. G is the, the marker data, and CV, this is a covariate, which is a, a population structure, or uh, uh, which uh, is a PCA, which takes account of population structure. The major.allele.0 is equal to true means that this model is going to uh, favor the minor alleles. And the SNP dot main MF is a minor allele frequency, which is 0 0.05. And the model you specify here is GLM. Let's, this uh, code stands for all that which I've said. And this the uh, GLM model. So I run this. So this has finished running. So we are going to view the QQ plot and the Manhattan plot of this uh, GLM. First, let's view the QQ plot. 
what we are getting what we are getting from this QQ plot is there's a lot of false positive. A lot of that means that every SNP here is significantly is uh, as a significant association. This is a spurious association. We are having false positive. Let's view the Manhattan plot of this. Uh, this Manhattan plot. This Manhattan plot shows some heats here in chromosome 10 and chromosome 18. But this, we cannot rely on this because of these GQQ plots. So we need to correct this by including a MLM, which takes account of the relatedness using a kinship uh, matrix. So uh, let's learn the second model. All these parameters are the same. What has changed is here specifying MLM, which is uh, uh, yeah this mixed linear model. Let's look at the QQ, QQ plot of the MLM, mixed linear model. This is the QQ plot of, uh, uh, of the mixed linear model. is perfectly corrected. Compare that with this one of general linear model, which has false positive. However, if we look at this one of MLM, it has corrected for thus having some view uh, division here. So let's look at the Manhattan plot of uh, MLM. So there is no heat. This means this MLM overcorrected. So it overcorrected this and therefore there is no heat here. That's a problem of MLM. Also, remember GLM had heats, but there's no this one had false positives. So GAPIT has developed another mo model called FAM CPU. This is fixed and random model circulated, circulating probability unification, which corrects this of a correctness that is found in MLM. So everything is uh, is the same, but now the model here changes to farm CPU. Let's learn that. Now let's look at the QQ plot of farm CPU. Farm CPU QQ plot. You see this QQ plot is well collected, and there's some hits here. Uh, let's view the Manhattan plot of farm CPU. So this Manhattan plot of farm CPU, it has some heats that are up here in the thre uh, threshold. Also, you can see farm CPU gives uh, a corrected uh, model, and also it gives heats. But MLM does not give any heat because it overcorrects. GLM gives heat but has spurious uh, association, false positives here. So I recommend you, in your analysis, you use farm CPU. That's how we do genome-wide association studies. I hope it was helpful. My name is Wilfred Abincha. Kindly subscribe, like.